Hey, it's Gab McKean, and today's day four of the 22 day 22 push up challenge for me. And it's to raise awareness for um, uh, military vets um, who are suffering with post traumatic stress disorder. And apparently, 22 of them uh, kill themselves every day, which is just horrible, just completely insane. So, anyways, um, today I'm going to do my 22 push ups again. Um, today I'm feeling it definitely, it's day four, and uh, also I did, did a fitness class this morning and yesterday as well, yesterday morning, and so uh, I feel a little bit of delayed onset muscle soreness, um, not feeling a lot of energy, which is um, something I thought I'd talk about today because someone with uh, extreme anxiety, stress, um, this is something that they experience a lot, okay? Someone with a lot of anxiety is, is usually having a very poor quality of sleep if, you know, when they do get to sleep. And so that's going to affect their energy levels. Um, also, like mentally, they, because they have anxiety, it's constantly draining. They have terrible, often terrible focus, terrible concentration. And so they're compromised physically and mentally and, and sometimes. And, and so how does a person who's struggling with that kind of stuff, or even just average people who have a little bit of stress, or how do they motivate themselves, how do they get things done when they're uncomfortable, when they're worn out, or whatever. And so I was going to share a couple little things that I've learned. And um, one of them is is making, um, setting some goals and some, some expectations. And for someone with a lot of stress or anxiety, uh, someone with uh, PTSD, they it may be like a huge thing for this for them to get out of bed or just to to function on a minimal level, and um, you know, and and this may lead to to depression. They feel if they feel that their expectations are not met, their goals and their dreams are are not achievable anymore, that leads to depression. Okay. And when they completely buy into that, when they believe that that's the way things are and it's never going to change, that leads to hopelessness. And then things get really bad for them. So what we want to do here, uh, you know, for anyone you know that's struggling with, with anxiety or depression or anything, one of the tools that's useful is just encouraging them to, to, to use lists and schedules. Okay? And that can help people get, get active right away. Um, to just set the start with lists or whatever, and just make the most basic things like I'm gonna go make myself a cup of tea. I'm gonna even things that are considered uh, you know relaxing or whatever. I'm gonna from this time to this time I'm gonna watch TV or whatever. And and you can even write things on the list that you've already done. Maybe you've already made made your cup uh, cup of tea, but just write it on the list and check it off, and you'll feel a sense of momentum that will make the next thing a little bit easier to do. You're training yourself to make a goal. And do it and so that's something that they can do right away and also having uh, you know a schedule and then doing it gives them a sense of a sense of power a sense of accomplishment even if it's not what their hopes are it's a little bit it's working towards that um, another thing is um, that's useful I mean, you've probably heard people say um, if you if you have something a task to do and it's very uncomfortable or mentally you're like oh man I don't want to do this or whatever or just you know one thing you can do is just tell yourself I'm going to try it for five minutes just for five minutes and most of the time people start doing a task and they kind of get into it after a while and, it, and now it's they can just complete it even though but they gave themselves permission to to not be perfect to just to try it and that's a very useful tool and then the last one that I find really interesting and useful is sometimes when you go through some kind of uh, trauma or if you're under stress or maybe you have a physical injury or whatever, um, things that you used to do you may not do anymore. And this can be kind of uh, depressing for, for people. And so what, what a good idea is to make a list of two columns. And one column that's going to say things I used to do or things I used to love but I don't do anymore because of blank, okay? It could be because pain, it could be because you, you don't feel motivated, you, you're shy, you're lazy, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Whatever excuse you give yourself, okay? 
So you write these things down, and maybe you used to ride a bike, or you used to, um, I don't know, it could be anything. It really could be anything. And you write these things down, it starts getting your mind, um, you know, back on track, and not using like, your excuses as a barrier, but just get the information out there. And then in the second column, it's um, things that you you never did, but you might you might want to try, but you don't because of blank, whatever, the same thing, because you don't think you can or whatever. And so the important thing is just to, to get your brain thinking about these possibilities, whereas previously it may have been fixated on, on negative things, like I can't do this because of this, or I don't have the, the money or the time or the energy or whatever. And it starts getting us kind of focused on what we can do. And using that with combinations of using lists or using scheduling, just to start getting moving, getting people moving, getting people active. And, I mean, everyone deals with this to a degree, but someone who is experiencing a lot of anxiety, it's very difficult, very challenging for them to do, to do things. Anyhow, like I say, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it a bit today, I'm feeling worn out, I, it would have been easy for me to skip this. Um, but, you know, it occurred to me, well, then it's a perfect opportunity to, to talk about the dis discomfort and, you know, feelings of not being motivated. Okay, here we go. 22 push-ups. Alright, here we go. See you tomorrow.